So I'm going to talk to you about the uh, French Pyrenees, which is a wonderful destination that Nature Trek um, runs several tours to during the spring and summer. And I think there's even one in the autumn as well for the autumn bulbs, which can be uh, very wonderful. But I'm going to put a particular focus on the Wildlife Festival, um, which we have uh, running during uh, mid-June every year. Uh, now, I was did this tour back in 2022, uh, and it's a really, really special trip. And this was this is perhaps the epitome of a nature trek tour that's got something for everybody, whatever their particular interest uh, is within wildlife. So where are the Pyrenees? I expect you all know uh, we fly from um, uh, London to Lourdes in the southwest of France, a flight of only about an hour and a half, something like that. Um, landing in Lourdes and then taking the really very short uh, drive, just about an, an hour, hour and a half up into the foothills uh, and then the high peaks of the Pyrenees, where we stay in the beautiful little village of Gedre, at just over a thousand metres right up in the Pyrenees, quite close to the Spanish border. So in that satellite view there, we are looking south. So anything beyond that yellow line is Spain, but we stay within France. By and large, on this trip, we may take the odd step across the border, um, but we're on a French Pyrenees. So we're on the cooler, more humid northern flank of the Pyrenees. And this is where we stay, <coughs> the lovely Hotel Breche de Roland, which is run by our old friends Philippe and Odile, who've been running this place for a very, very long time indeed. And if I've got my facts straight, this is, I believe, the hotel uh, run even way back then by Philippe and Odile, where um, Nature Trek uh, ran its very first European tour back in 1980-something, back in the mists of time. Um, so this was a, a real, you know, this is a really important place in Nature Trek history. And on the June uh, Wildlife Festival, we take over the entire hotel. So the whole place is filled with uh, mad keen naturalists and people who enjoy the high mountains and walkers and just generally good people to spend lots of time with and to enjoy the lovely mountain atmosphere. It's an absolutely stunning little hotel that Philippe and Odile, they run it just absolutely beautifully. Um, the, the, as you'll see, I hope the food is exquisite. Uh, the rooms are beautiful. It's lovely and quiet and it's just the most lovely place to stay. Uh, it's set spectacularly in the village of Jedra, um, high up in the Pyrenees, and it's just the most perfect spot. It's called the Hotel Breche de Roland because you have lovely views to the south um, into the very highest peaks of the Pyrenees. Uh, and that ridge there is the border with Spain. And I think you might be able to see up here there's a kind of bite or cut into the uh, curtain wall at the back of the uh, Cirque de Gavarni, more of which a little bit later on, which is called the Breche de Roland, which is where the uh, French mythological hero, a kind of French King Arthur type, is supposed to have smote the uh, mountainside with his uh, uh, sword and chopped this big breach in the mountains up high there, the Breche de Roland. And there's a little bit of a close up of it. We won't be getting that close to it because there is no proper mountain climbing involved in this trip, I promise. And more about that later. Mountain trips can sometimes be a little bit um, intimidating because some people think, oh, crikey, I'll be scrambling up these slopes and going up precipices and then back down really tight little footpaths and so on. Well, actually, no, you won't. We've got it all sorted out. All the sites that we go to are highly accessible uh, by vehicle and then gentle walks with no more than small undulations. Although uh, in the Wildlife Festival, one of the beauties of this is that we can have slight variations. So small numbers of people can go off and perhaps do a slightly more challenging walk. Other people might focus on butterflies and orchids one day. Another group might be looking for birds the next day and then swap news and then go to other places um, during the course of the week. So it's very flexible, something for everyone, but it's a very accessible part of the world. And the beauty of Jedra is its location. Here it is at just over a thousand metres, but it's within easy reach by nine-seater minibus of numerous sites up to, and in fact, in some cases, well above 2,000 metres. So this place that I'll take you to later on, 
uh, which is called the Cirque de Tremouse, one of the largest of these huge bowl-shaped glacial troughs up high in the mountains here. Uh, where we have our picnic up here uh, is at nearly 2,200 meters. But as I say, you won't notice it because we'll drive you up there. We'll get you to this lovely area. And once you're there, as you can see, it's pretty flat. And we just wander around gently and have a nice walk in the Alpine meadows. It's just stunning. And so, as you can see, almost everywhere you go from Shedra, there's a wonderful uh, Pyrenean uh, valley to explore. Many of them well populated by both sheep and goats and also cattle. Uh, and this is one of the last areas um, in Europe uh, where uh, traditional transhumance is practiced. Transhumance is where the animals are taken up into the high pastures for the summer and then they are walked back down the mountains um, in the um, autumn time where they'll be fed on hay uh, and kept at lower altitude. And when we're there during June, this is the time when the animals are being taken up to those high meadows because the grass has grown, the hay is lush, uh, and there's lots to be uh, eaten for a delicious, uh, I would say a delicious cow, that comes across all wrong, but um, it is, I suppose, functionally true. But we will encounter these sorts of great uh, herds of cattle making their way up into the high pastures. These great U-shaped glacial troughs, these valleys with small streams flowing down through them, are the bread and butter of our trips. And we'll be exploring several of these uh, on successive days. Some of them quite stark and rocky, um, others of them more lush. And we do find some areas with really quite remarkably well-developed uh, flora and their associated uh, fauna as well. What sorts of birds might you expect to see? Well, these are mountains, so you'd expect to see uh, birds of prey. And indeed, of course, we do. Uh, one of the ones we see a little bit more frequently is the short-toed snake eagle, um, which does, as the name suggests, feed on uh, lizards and especially uh, snakes, even in these high mountains. Uh, we also see vultures on a daily basis. The commoner or the commonest of the three vultures which is present is the griffin vulture. Uh, and if we're very lucky, we may encounter uh, a group of them down on a carcass, perhaps an unfortunate sheep or uh, a Pyrenean chamois, for example. Uh, and if they're there and they're feeding, they can be quite tolerant of a close approach. This is a group we found on the way down, walking off one of the uh, one of the hills a couple of years ago. There are also Egyptian vultures, which breed in small numbers in the French Pyrenees, and we have a good chance of encountering some of those. But the vulture that everyone wants to see in the Pyrenees uh, is this one, the Lamagaya, uh, or sometimes known as the bearded vulture, uh, which is Europe's uh, rarest vulture. Um, but luckily in the Pyrenees, it remains, I'll say, not uncommon. It's it's never an abundant species, uh, but we would expect to see Lamagaya's on most days. And we do know exactly where there's a regular and traditional nest site in one of the valleys, which we should be able to show you. And with luck, show you the uh, growing chick sitting on the edge of the uh, nest, waiting for its parents to bring it some delicious uh, cracked up bones. As I've mentioned before, uh, in some areas, not all, but in some areas, there is very, very well developed um, hay meadow habitat. And there's some absolutely stunning areas of this sort of habitat, which support huge numbers, by British standards, absurdly huge numbers of butterflies. And there are occasions where you're just overwhelmed and you just don't know which way to look. Um, many, many of these species are, are um, either very, very rare or infrequent or in fact unknown in Britain. So we'll see lots and lots of this. One of the commonest uh, species to be seen, in fact, the black veined white butterfly, uh, but also lots and lots of fritillaries, um, pearl bordered fritillary, which is a pretty scarce species in Britain, uh, and heath fritillary, which is a very rare species in Britain, are both just absurdly common and you have them along roadsides and uh, flitting around your feet. Um, up in these high mountains. And there are eight or 10 other fritillary species we can expect to see, including Queen of Spain uh, and spotted fritillaries as well. The brown family, 
tends to be a little bit undersold as a group of butterflies to look at. But there are some stunning examples of this family up there in the Pyrenees as well. Uh, the pearly heath, a nice variation, uh, quite similar to our small heath butterfly, but with this lovely white flash on the uh, under hind wing. And the large wall brown, which is a variation on the, the perhaps familiar uh, wall brown, but a big, big butterfly with these lovely big eye spots. Also in the brown family, there are lots and lots of species of ringlet, and many of them are extremely tricky to identify. If you're really, really into your butterflies, uh, Nature Trek also offers uh, a specialist butterfly trip a little bit later in the year uh, when we tend to capture a slightly wider variety of butterflies. And the focus is very much more on those butterflies but of course, we do also take in all the other wildlife as well. Uh, and it's possible a little bit later in the season to see over 70 uh, species in a single week. In the Wildlife Festival week, well north of 50 species of butterflies entirely likely. A um, little bit weather dependent, but generally speaking, we have lots of sunny, warm weather and the butterflies fly and show us their stuff. There are quite subtle species of butterfly to see as well, like the skippers, dingy, quite common in Britain, but also the lovely marbled skipper. Um, and then various different variations on the grizzled skipper. There are five or six species of grizzled skipper to look for. Uh, this is the Obertur's grizzled skipper, which if you, you know, didn't look extremely closely, you'd have difficulty distinguishing from the British species. There are coppers to see as well, the purple uh, edged copper and the sooty copper are particularly beautiful examples of those. Uh, and then, of course, there are the blues and there are just blues everywhere of about 15, 20 different species, large blues, small blues, but also species we don't get in Britain like this, the mazarine blue. Uh, long-tailed blue as well, various different uh, gorgeous, gorgeous species to have a look at, and all just abundant around your feet, wherever you look. No effort at all to find many, many kinds of wonderful butterflies. If you're very lucky in a few special spots, you might get the chance to see um, some really quite specialist species like the Lesser Purple Emperor. And two that we really look for in the high mountains are the Apollos. This one, the False Apollo, which may look horrifically worn, and that individual is a bit worn, it's true, but these uh, sort of blank sections at the ends of the wings where they don't have scales, that is normal for the species, in fact. But the one that we really want to see and we will succeed in finding is the glorious Apollo, the true Apollo, a lovely, lovely high altitude butterfly, really big, the size of a swallowtail with these glorious red dots on the hind wing. And we should get good views of that species, too. There's other insects to see as well, things like the sulfur owl fly, which glides around like a, a wingsuit um, pilot. Uh, absolutely amazing insect. And when I first saw that, I was I was just blown away by it better than any butterfly I saw on the trip, I think it was. Uh, there's Italian shield bugs, the so-called AC Milan shield bug, named after the red and black football kit of said football team. Um, a few dragonflies, not all that many, because it's quite cool and quite high altitude. Uh, there's a few to have a look at, and we should get a good view of quite a few species of those, including four spotted chasers. There are some orthoptera will certainly hear a lot of bush crickets and indeed field crickets. And if we're lucky, we should get to grips with a few species, including the rather sought after uh, wartbiter bush cricket, which is a very rare species indeed in Britain, but rather more common on the continent. So we'll be exploring these valleys at high altitude, but also at lower altitude. It's important not to just go for the high alpine specialities. And at lower altitude, we often find a beautiful selection um, of plants, including orchids, uh, which are a big attraction for many people, uh, various species of orchids to uh, enjoy, um, including the lovely burnt orchid, which in Britain rarely grows more than about three inches tall, but grows up to a foot tall um, in the foothills of the Pyrenees. Um, this one, the early spider orchid, uh, an extremely rare, uh, well, extremely range restricted species in Britain, but delightfully abundant in the Pyrenees. 
greater butterfly orchid also um, abundant in all these gorgeous flower filled meadows and hedgerows. Pyramidal orchids, familiar from Britain, but vanilla orchid, completely unknown from um, Britain. There are many other alpine specials to see, including the gentians, spring and trumpet ventions, gentians, uh, which are a big hit with many visitors. Um, and then when we're up in these high uh, lakeside uh, environments, this is the beauty of it. Once we get you there, the fact that there's a lake and there's a path around it shows you that it's flat. Uh, and we can walk around at high altitude, taking in the beautiful scenery and the really beautifully varied wildlife. One thing we will look very hard for is this, a very special species, the Pyrenean brook salamander, which is endemic to the Pyrenees, only found in that one place. And where we see that is this beautiful place I mentioned earlier, the Cirque de Tremouse, at over 2,200 metres in these very, very cold springs. Now, how do we get you up there? Well, we drive you as far as we can, but then we put you on this wonderful contraption a little land train towed by an impressively large tractor, which gets you up the last four or 500 metres of ascent as you sit there in comfort. And at the top there, your nature trek leaders, as usual, for those of you who've been in, on a nature trek tour before, will make you, I hope, a delicious um, picnic lunch while you sit and enjoy the plants, the butterflies, the flowers, and then spread out with your lunch and relax in the sunshine, uh, taking in the views. At one point, we will certainly take you on this walk, which uh, goes up way, way up high to almost as high at 2,100 metres and the border with Spain. Uh, and up there, we have a good chance of seeing a few mammals, alpine marmots, uh, which are now thankfully abundant again in the Pyrenees, having gone extinct and having to be reintroduced mid-century. Uh, but also we hope to see Pyrenean chamois, a rather endangered uh, species of chamois different from the alpine variety. Up there at high altitudes, we'll be looking for the uh, rock thrush. And if we're very, very fortunate indeed, and we check around snow patches, we might find the very desirable white winged snow finch. But that will only be found at the very highest altitudes uh, where almost, well, I won't say almost anything's possible, but there are even one or two other alpine specialities like the alpine eccenter and even wall creeper has been seen on previous trips up here. The highlight for many uh, will be a visit to the Cirque de Gavarni, uh, which is only about 10 kilometres from Gedra. Uh, and we take a full day walk deep into the heart of this enormous glacial landscape, a vast glacial bowl with enormous titanic waterfall cascades falling down, including uh, Europe's largest free falling uh, or highest free falling waterfall right down into the floor of the Cirque. And we enjoy uh, our picnic up there in the company of alpine chuffs and lammergeiers and ravens and also some glorious endemic plants like the Raymonda, uh, distantly related to the African violets and a very, very rare um, species only found in the Pyrenees. Uh, and for those of you who are botanically minded, there are several endemic species up here to enjoy. Things like the Pyrenean saxifrage, an absolutely stunning two or three foot long flower spike that only flowers once and then the plant dies. The long leaf butterwort found on a very few north facing um, cool, um, wet rock walls. Pyrenean fritillaries only found in this mountain range and nowhere else on earth. And also Pyrenean rampions and thistles and a whole plethora of other endemic, beautiful plants up here. Other alpines include St. Bernard's lily and the fringed pink, among many other representatives within their families, um, such as the Turks uh, turban lily uh, and that lovely columbine or aquilegia on the right hand side there. Many of these species, if they're found at all in Britain, are scarce. In the Pyrenees, they are super abundant. Fairy foxglove growing on some of the specific rocks on some uh, uh, roadside spots is a particular favourite. And there are just numerous saxifrages and gentians and stone crops and any number of botanical wonders uh, to be seen. 
Just coming to the end now, uh, we will also look be on the lookout for some uh, reptiles just to make sure all the different animal and plant groups are covered. Uh, wall lizards are not uncommon. There are snakes, not a, many, not a great many, but we do have a couple of regular spots where we can go and look for smooth snake, uh, which is, a, again, a very rare species in Britain, but much more frequent um, in the south of France. So when you've had a full day of that, enjoying gentle rambles and delicious picnic lunches and gentle drives, none of the drives taking more than 45 minutes to an hour absolute maximum, and many of them shorter from the hotel. Uh, at the end of all that, you'll probably be ready to come back to the hotel uh, and enjoy uh, a delicious meal in the relaxed, intimate uh, dining room um, where the food is, I will I'll be honest with you, it is the best food I've ever had on any nature trek trip, trip that I've ever led. And I've done very many of them. And the food here at the hotel in Jedra is absolutely outstanding. Whether you're a vegetarian, a meat eater, a vegan, all of these are covered. The food is simply superb, both the uh, main courses and the delicious desserts, which are just have to be tasted to be believed um you've got an absolute treat uh, in store along with an extremely extensive and uh i'm assured um reliable and well-stocked wine list so uh, what more could you ask for for a seven-day trip to europe and the pyrenees so i'll leave you with that one last view um, of one of these high altitude lakes that we'll visit um, and encourage all of you to put this on your mm, maybe list for 2024, the Wildlife Festival in June to the High Pyrenees. And I hope you've enjoyed having a look at a few photos. Thank you very much.